going to look at the carbon carbon double bond in this video um, so just a reminder for you there of the definition for the covalent bond so we define it as a shared pair of electrons and I've drawn up the dot and cross diagram for an ethene molecule C2H4 so you can see that the hydrogen electrons are represented by the blue crosses the carbon on the left has the red circles for its electrons, its outer electrons so carbon's in group 4 for outer electrons and the carbon on the right has the green circles for its electrons so you can see we have a single covalent bond here, here, here and here so that's one shared pair of electrons between the two atoms between the two carbons you can see we have two pairs shared and so that's called a double covalent bond as you can see in the in the title there so what we're going to look at is the ways in which these two pairs of electrons are being shared by those two atoms because they're actually shared in a slightly different way and we end up with two types of bond within the CC double bond. I'm now going to start and build up the, the covalent bonds on this diagram here. So you can see we've got all the atoms but they're not connected yet. So the hydrogen electrons were represented as blue crosses on my original slide, so I'll put them in first. The left hand carbon's electrons were represented as red circles, so I'll put those in. I'll put two in so far. I'll put the right hand electrons in there. And then we get to the interesting part because, as I said in the first slide, the, the covalent bonds, this double covalent bond between these two carbons, we've actually got two types of covalent bond in there. So, let's just draw some lines in there now to show that these are now connected. So I'm going to draw one of the bonds, and I'm going to represent that in the usual way with um, the green circle, so the right hand electron and the left hand electron. Right, these one, two, three, four, five covalent bonds have all got something in common. They're all classed as what we call sigma bonds. Now, it gets quite complicated explaining what sigma bonds are, but one way to think about it is you, you know that all the electrons are in orbitals and when a covalent bond is formed the orbitals overlap and the pair of electrons is effectively shared between the two atoms. Now sigma bonds are formed when orbitals overlap end to end like that. Okay, So the orbital that the red, sorry the blue cross was in and the orbital that the red circle is in have overlapped like that and so is that so is that so is that and so is that so you can see I've added the sigma labels to those five bonds the carbon's fourth remaining electron is in a p orbital and again if we remember from unit one p orbitals are lobe shaped they have an upper lobe and a lower lobe Let's just draw them in there. So this fourth electron is somewhere in this region of space. Okay, so I'll just put them in. So this is the red circle. So it's somewhere in this region of space, that red electron and the green one is somewhere in there. Now at the moment, these, this, these electrons aren't a shared pair, so they're not, it's not a covalent bond yet. Something has to happen for that to turn into... Um, a covalent bond. So what happens is the p orbitals actually expand. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just widening that space. We'll do the same to this upper lobe. And eventually 
they will overlap and create one region of space. So you can see there they've actually merged into one region of space. You can see the lower lobe does exactly the same thing. So instead of having these two separate p orbitals with one electron in each, we create an orbital that has this shape with a pair of electrons in. So that's a shared pair of electrons, but it's a covalent bond. Now the electrons, remember, they're constantly on the move, so they can either be up here or they can be down there. At any one time though, the pair of electrons will either be up or down. So there's only ever two pairs of electrons. The sigma pair is fixed. Whereas this pair of electrons can move. So the pair of electrons can move. They can either be in this region of space here, or they can be down in this region of space here. So they're fluctuating above and below this sigma bond here. So I've tidied the diagram up again now and we have these new regions of space here. So at the moment I've got the two electrons in the upper part of the, the new orbital. So the electron pair could either be up there or they could be down there. Because this bond was formed in a different way to the sigma bond, we don't call it a sigma bond, it's called a pi bond. So, so pi bonds are formed when two p orbitals overlap side, side to side, whereas sigma bonds are formed when two orbitals overlap end to end. Let's finish off with some models. So we've got this regular model of an ethene molecule. So you can see there the carbon-carbon double bond. So now we know that one of these covalent bonds in the double bond is a sigma bond. These are also sigma bonds to the hydrogen, whereas this bond here is a different type of covalent bond known as a pi bond. These last model kits show this quite nicely. So we have the sigma bonds shown as the grey orbitals there. And there's your p orbitals on each carbon. So remember, before these overlap, you've got that fourth electron orbit in this region of space and this region of space. And what do they do? They overlap side to side, and you create these regions of space where the pair of electrons can be found here or here.